Not many people seem to be aware that there is a major British palace in South Wales that was built in the second century during the so-called Roman era. Uh, the Welsh triads tell us that this was built by King Owen, who was a Silurus king from that area. Uh, you can still see Ustrid Owen just up the road, which was the town named after him. And you can see his burial mound, obviously labelled as Motton Bailey Castle, but there it is, Ustrid Owen, right next to the church. There's the burial mound. I'm Ross from Britain's Hidden History. And we're out today. Uh, before I tell you where we are, I'm going to show you that the old traditions of burying the Welsh kings, where in the early days you would build a mound and then uh, this would be next to a church. And quite often the church would be dedicated to the person who paid for and founded the church. So in this situation, we're in a town called Astrid Owain, which is a clue, Owain. The church is called St. Owain. <laughs> And sure enough, we've got the church there, and right next to it is the mound. So you can see here, it's absolutely fantastic uh, burial mound. I'm just going to read something from our tourist Rex Discover to give you an idea about it. So, the search for the British kings does throw up a few problems, but it also presents a great number of opportunities. There is at Major, a buried villa, which I'm going to go and visit, uh, not today, but we'll see that soon, said in Welsh tradition to have been built for King Owen. This is Owen again. So it's Owen, Ap uh, Cuthlin, Ap Caradoc, Ap Bran. And he ruled about 120 to 150 AD. The strange thing with this palace, I mean, it's a substantial find. Uh, the total site covers, check, over eight acres. Uh, the living quarters occupied two acres with 20 rooms. One room was 60 feet by 51 feet, uh, with the remaining walls rising to nine feet high. Um, the walls are plastered and covered with remains of beautiful paintwork. And there are also human remains uh, found there, along with remains of horses, which shows there was some kind of uh, raid on the place, which also fits the historic records. Now, the strange thing is, this was uh, discovered in the 1880s. <laughs> and uh, as you'll see in the video, pictures were taken, excavation work was done. Um, but strangely, everything stopped. And we can't help wonder why is it that not that many miles away, millions and millions are spent on providing the wonderful visitor attraction at Caerleon, which celebrates the Roman rulers or invaders, uh, and also the, the sort of English castle, if you like, in Caerphilly has got millions spent on it, and yet the money is not available to even do proper archaeology on this truly British and Welsh site. Why we have no interest or pride in our own stuff and seem obsessed with making everything foreign. I'm Ross from Britain's in History and I'm out and about on the site visit with friends again and this time we're going to the Palace of Caer Mead built to the British Kings in the Roman style. Not Roman. <laughs> was excavated, or they started to. And when their uh, excavations started to uh, confirm it wasn't Roman, guess what? Excavation stopped, site filled in, and now all you're left with is this rather unimpressive looking field with a palace in the background. Yeah, so when the excavation started, there's a lot of excitement uh, about what they discovered. Here was the palace. The problem was, it had to be Roman. The British records say it was built by a British king in the Roman style. So everything was proceeding along quite happily. So they get to the floor, the mosaics, this kind of thing, and they start realising, hey, this isn't Roman. It doesn't fit. The images are wrong. The scenes are wrong. And then, <laughs> sure enough, the whole uh, dig got shut down. And that was it. So it's having some massive visitor centre and uh, a lot of fuss played about this amazing British palace and isn't it great to see the archaeology and the mosaics and you can see the designs supposedly traced him back to 
Middle Eastern origins, which gives support for the migrations. What a wonderful site this should be. So instead, nothing, just a field, which you'd do well to find even. And uh, so let's go and have a look. All right, so don't touch any crops, you good visitor. I think it's growing spinach or something. Yeah, so well done Tim for tracking this down. And uh, that elevated section there is uh, what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, so come on archaeologists. No one's allowed to fly or travel anywhere. We've got universities in this country, must be one of the things to do. Well, how about this? Here's a palace. And we know it's there. The archaeology's already been partially done. What do you reckon, Tim? We're looking for this white marble, aren't we? Do you reckon that's that's what happens to marble after? I have no idea. Years of. I have no idea. This could be a war anyway, couldn't it? It's one of those things you have to get yeah. tested, wouldn't you, in the lab? Trying to establish some sort of war here, do you think, or? Tricky to tell, isn't it? That's why you do archaeology digs. What do you think of the position? Yeah, Tim, just say what do I think of the position of it as a palace? I mean, uh, I don't know, I mean, you got is that the coast over here, Tim? Yep. Behind, which, which, which part of the coast is that? Nash Point. Back down to Nash Point where we just were. Oh, yeah. Atlantic Major. I mean, um, a fairly commanding position in, uh, you know, the Southern Plain area. You've got a good view all the way out to St. Hilary. Uh, you can see the high ground just over there, which is probably going to be towards the Garth and towards Caffili and your views to the right, I mean, if good good commanding views all the way down towards Wick and Dunraven, um, especially if that tree cover was a little less dense. And you really are in the centre of a very level plane, good field of view. Well, the player's always been associated with wealth and stuff, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you want to do farming, I mean, this is the area you do it, isn't it? Yeah. There's all the big houses around here, the wealth of the country, really. And the bottom line is, it matches um, where the ancient description says it is. <laughs> That's the frustrating thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's where it's supposed to be, and it's got the building it's supposed to have. In the style it's supposed to be, it's built in the Roman style by a British king because it is the, um, the very famous one in the southeast of England isn't it? That's uh, the same deal there, you know, there's a Roman style What was that? Uh, the southeast of England the Roman style fortress, but everyone's you know, quite happy that it's not Roman it's just in that style, it was part of their uh, winning over the locals I'm trying to pacify them in Wales, I would say it's more like it all right, so this is the site of the palace. As you can see, it's quite extensive. And um, I just noticed, look below me, there's some work stones there. These are definitely worked, Tim. There's some there. Can you see any signs of the actual dig itself? Uh, I, don't, I don't know where. So I think they filled it all back in, didn't they? <coughs> Yeah, and there's more signs of walls. Yeah, just start to rain now, lovely. <clears throat> Middle of June. They've had a good run. Yeah, there's no, you can't even see where the archaeological dig was now, it's all been filled in. What you do notice as you walk around 
There are lots of these quite bright white stones. They look worked, you know, they look like walls. There's another wall running here. <laughs> and ask Bob Morgan if this is on the LiDAR. You can almost guarantee that it's not going to be. It's going to be just missing. So it'd be great for the company here with some ground scanning devices and have a look. And I think we'll have to come back in the winter when all this has died back. And it's, uh, you can see more, you don't get stung and shredded. And there's the sea, and the, not that far away, you see. Pretty close to the coast. So if you're a wealthy king, this would be a nice spot for your palace. Yeah, the ancient Welsh triads talking about this site and King Owen building the palace uh, were translated into English in 1794. Uh, and this, this is well known about. It's not just come from nowhere. And um, the first dig, as you mentioned, was by Story in 1888. And it's a bit of a tragic um, <laughs> addition to uh, I'll just read from Story's notes of 1888. It was also known that houses with carved stones had been found there. Care meat. For one man still living, whose father had been employed by Humphrey Denbury, who was a tenant of the Lord Butte. This Humphrey Denbury has a lime kiln near the spot where the house of Daniel Davis JP has been built, and for a period of over twenty years he burned limestone from the old walls, giving his reason that the stones were all ready for burning, having no shale or mother attached, and so saving the labour of cleaning them which had to be done when stones were quarried from the natural bed had to be used. So we've got clear evidence there that it was a lime, you know, a beautiful palace and the walls were still there. Uh, this man can distinctly recollect his father telling how Mr. Denbury preferred to carve, carve stones for burning into lime and that he hauled great quantities of carved stone to the kiln. Uh, Denbury died in 1795 when you can see his gravestone near the door of the church in Clanithdid Vaud, or Lantic Major. <clears throat> so, it's a tragedy all in all, but it's not too late, the site's still there. <clears throat> Some sort of virtuality can be done. It should be excavated, it should be shown off. The problem is, <laughs> being second century, this falls right into the period when there were supposed to be no independent Welsh kings, and the whole area was overrun by Romans. And this, this could be the reason why it will never be shown and this site will never be displayed or get the funding or attention that places like the Roman Caerleon do. <laughs>